Hi, today I want to talk about the latest update to the MD-11. Since the last release, there have been over 100 changes. I'm very, very proud to uh, show some of them off today. Most of the changes were related to the FMS system, not only in continuing the development, but tying the FMS into other parts of the aircraft, like the autoflight system and some of the other systems, the display units, etc. Also made a bunch of other improvements to the display units, so we'll talk about that here briefly. Uh, in the Aircraft Config Center, we have these two options that have been added for the EAD and SD, so you can use taped gauges now. Those have been added, and uh, the Pratt & Whitney uh, dial order has also been added here. Anyway, uh, another thing I want to talk about is that the Aircraft Config Center will now set up a couple things in the FMS for you when you load a panel state, just to make it easier if you're uh, just trying to jump in and go. So if I load ready for takeoff here, I'm just going to set the parking brake here, because I don't want to go quite yet. Uh, you'll see that if we come down here, it's already put in the information on the weight init page. And uh, we also have enough information to calculate our takeoff stab position. So as you can see, that is there. Now, this is based on the aircraft weights. So if I go ahead and lie to the FMS and I say that we have a CG of 15, you can see now it's changed what our stab should be. And we now have an amber box because it's not correct. So the system calculates dynamically based on your weight and CG and all that and flap setting that you select on the uh, takeoff approach page. It will calculate what the correct staff position is and you'll see it here on the page there and on the SD. Let's go ahead and correct that again. We'll just click this button and I've added a shortcut to populate the correct value and uh, now we're back to business. So, uh, oops, wrong button. There we go. So let's just add some route information here. Entering this into the pages. I'm not going to set up a lot here, just enough to demonstrate what I want to demonstrate for today. Okay, so on the takeoff approach page, flap setting goes in there. Uh, outside temperature. Now the manual tells you not to use the TAT because, you know, this may not be reliable, but uh, I don't care, so I'm just going to see what it says. Slope and wind. It's your runway slope and your headwind or tailwind. It just defaults to up and headwind, so I'll just put zero zero for now since the wind is calm and we're just, I'm just gonna assume the runway's flat. Can't be bothered to check what it actually is. So next thing is I'll put in a flex temperature. Let's just do flex 50 and let's do packs on just for fun. So as you can see, we have our takeoff EPR. GE engines would get an one instead. We've got a flex set, all that's working. Now it's asking us Check confirm B speed. So the message went away because I typed other stuff over here. But basically, what that's saying is it wants us to confirm that the V speeds it calculated is correct. And it's going to do that every time that we change information. So if I, you know, if let's say I confirm V1 and then I decided, hmm, maybe it's actually 15C outside. Well, if I go ahead and put this in here, it's going to reset and I have to confirm the V speeds again. So we're going to go back to 20 here. And when we start confirming our V speeds, what you'll see happening is that they will start to appear on the PFD. Right now we have no pitch guidance available as you can see because it doesn't know the V2 speed. Now the magenta here indicates that this is a MCDU calculated speed that has been confirmed by the pilot. <coughs> For VR, I'm going to override this, let's just put in 142, and you can see it's white. And that tells you that this is something that has been overridden by the pilot. The pilot entered this speed, it's not auto-computed. Now lastly, when we select our V2 here, you can see that a bunch of things happen. We get our V2 speed, we get our magenta bug. Now this magenta bug means that this is an FMS controlled speed target. And we get uh, our pitch guidance is now available. We got a flight director, uh, AP status is no longer yellow or amber. And as you can see, we now have a magenta speed target on the FMA. And this means that the speed that's selected is agreeing with what the FMS wants. And in this case, since you can see we have a magenta circle here, it agrees. Now if I override this and I put in 160, the indications change. Now it's white and we get the selected bug here instead because we have overridden the FMS command. I'm going to clear that. I want to use the FMS value. So now what we're going to do is take off and I'm going to show you how the behavior of the chain, the system is. So let me just make sure my joystick is calibrated. Looks okay. Sometimes I have to do that so it doesn't uh, give bad inputs. 
Alright, so parking brake can go away and we will take off. So we're going to set the power. I'm going to push auto flight, advance the power, and we get takeoff thrust. You can see it's setting our flex thrust automatically. Now, what you're going to see is as we accelerate, these speeds are going to move from those boxes onto the scale. You can see that's happening right now. So let's look at that closely. You can see that they've now moved onto the scale and they're pointing to where they are. Now, what happens is, is when we pass VR, V1 is going to go away. And when we pass V2, VR is going to go away. So we'll just be left with V2. Also, as we accelerate through V2, the system will progressively increase this speed until it hits V2 plus 10. So, uh, of course, if you get an engine out, it will change a bit. It will, you know, grab the current speed between V2 and V2 plus 10. But we're not doing an engine out today, so it's just going to accelerate to V2 plus 10. So there's V1, VR. Start to rotate. You can see the V2 speed is increasing. And we have V2 plus 10. Now, I rotated a little slow there just to demonstrate that. So we're a little fast, but we'll go ahead and meet that flight director bar. Positive climb gear up. I'll go ahead and kick on the autopilot, and let's just set a heading select of 190 here. Okay. Now, on the PFD, you can see that even though we have a pre-select of 250, which is set on the panel here, we are in the takeoff speed guidance mode, so we have a magenta circle. Now, the distinction I need to make, and this is kind of confusing, the takeoff speed guidance is driven by the FMS, but it is not the same as FMS speed, which is why pitch is in white. You can engage FMS speed at 400 feet. It's not yet simulated, but once it is, you can do that, and then pitch will turn magenta, and then you have automatic speed control until landing. But for now, we're going to leave it in. We're going to leave it off since it's not simulated yet, and we're just in the takeoff speed guidance mode. Now, what you can do is you can override this. So I'm going to, in this case, let's select 100 and uh, yeah, let's do 170. If I do that. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to do 180 because the bug's in the way. You can see that the bug is now a hollow circle. And that is just saying what the target wants to be, but we've not yet, uh, or we're not captured that target. It's not actually driving the speed. So the system is going to command a 180 pitch climb here. Now, what I want to point out is that if the number you put in agrees, so let's say I select 167 there, it will turn magenta on the FMA, but we still have the white bug because we have overridden it. Now, once you've exited the takeoff speed guidance uh, driving mode, let's call it that, um, where it's actually driving the speed bug, you can't get back into it unless you push FMS speed. But just for the purposes of this demo, I have a little thing here that will do that for me. There we go. It's like it never happened. So I will show you what happens. Now, when we cross 1670 feet here, it looks like I just uh, paused before it, we're going to switch to climb thrust automatically. There's climb thrust, the engines roll back to the climb EPR limit, the pitch comes down, and we're still, and even though it says climb thrust, we're still in takeoff guidance mode, we're still in the takeoff phase. That lasts until the acceleration altitude here. So what you'll see is when we get through the acceleration altitude, it's going to exit the takeoff speed guidance. So that will happen just about now. There. And when that happened, you can see that we've exited completely. The magenta bug is gone, and the MCDU moved to the approach page. Now, if we were in FMS speed, at this point, we would get an acceleration command. But as I said, that's not simulated yet, so it just exits. This is also what would happen if you did not engage FMS speed. If you left it off, uh, then you would see this behavior. And you'll also notice that from now on, trying to go into this page here will always result in the approach page. So at this point, since FMS speed is not active, we will go ahead and manually accelerate by selecting 250 knots. The pitch will come down, so we get a uh, acceleration flight path angle here. Flaps can come up. That's the RCWS anomaly. Kick in the yoke there. And you'll see here as we continue accelerating, the slats can come up as well. And you fly the plane like you used to. So that's just an overview of the changes here, um, the new takeoff speed guidance modes and all that. From now on, I'm going to focus on getting the perf pages added. As you can see, they, they don't work yet. 
Um, that's the next target, and once I get the perf pages added, I can add the full FMS speed mode that you could activate right now and hit this button here, and it will, you know, take care of all your speed. So that's what's coming next to the MV11. But I hope you enjoy this update. Hope you enjoy this demo. If you have any questions, please leave them below, and uh, thank you for your time.